Hello everyone. Good morning. It's uh, 10 on the dot. I will just give everyone maybe a couple more minutes to join. pasted a link to the uh, meeting notes. So I noticed quite a few people on the call. If you want to go, go down there and put your name down, that'll be great. And thank you, Ash, for volunteering to be the scribe today. No problem, Vinay. All right, maybe we'll start in just a minute. All right, I think we've got uh, quite a few people on and uh, why don't we get started? Welcome everyone, I guess, uh, happy new year uh, to kick off the uh, first meeting for 2021. Um, and we've got quite a, quite a few people on, so that's, that's great. Uh, so this is my first time uh, hosting the meeting. You know, it's so much easier to be in the audience than to host it, but uh, bear with me as I, as I walk us through today. Um, firstly, is there uh, anyone new to our group and who'd like to quickly introduce yourselves? Okay, I'll take that as a no. And uh, if not, uh, are there any uh, any items that anyone would like to bring up before I go through the uh, you know the roll call and call out uh, if anybody has any updates or items that you'd like to talk about? Okay. And in that case, uh, I'm going to call on Emily. I know uh, you probably want to uh, ask people to take a look at PRs. Emily, would you like to say a few words on that? Yes. So just a quick reminder that the tech leads and the co-chairs are not the only people that can look at PRs. We would like everybody that's part of the SIG and even folks that are looking to join to go ahead and review the PRs that currently exist. Um, sometimes it's good to just have a fresh set of eyes go over something that I've been working on or Brandon or anybody else has been working on, kind of get that second opinion to make sure that we're not going down the wrong tunnel. 
So if everybody could take a look at some of the PRs that we have in there, and if you've looked at it and it looks fine, just drop a comment on the PR, letting them know that it looks good to you. Um, things to pay attention to if you're new to this are um, language, grammar, smelling, making sure that it's in a line, um, alignment with how we would like to see some of the content laid out. So uh, text wrapping at 80 characters, um, spelling, those kinds of things. So that's the first thing about PRs. The other piece is that we have a ton of issues. We have 94 current open active, well, 94 open issues. A lot of them are inactive. So if you're new to the SIG or if you're, you've been around for a while and there's something that you wanna take a look at, there are quite a few um, inactive issues that we'd like to kind of drum up attention to, to determine whether or not they're still valid, if there's still interest. I know we have a couple of great projects upcoming that are planned, but some of these issues are relatively small and can be knocked out very easily and help clean up our queue. So if everybody could jump in the repo and take a look at those issues and those PRs, that would be fabulous. Sorted by all this first. Preferably, yes. Yep, that's that's a good point. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, Emily, um, and uh, and that's on me as well. And I, I have a couple I'd like to talk about. Maybe I'll come down, uh, come back to it. But maybe uh, I know Brandon uh, has something that you'd like to talk about, Brandon. Yeah, um, happy new year. And I think kind of the the main thing that I wanted to just highlight that people know um, last year um, in December we we mentioned a little bit about the security landscape, uh, and we also discussed that it needs a new name. <laughs> Maybe landscape isn't the, the, best, the best way to describe it. Um, so we are going to be kicking off that work um, next week. So I've scheduled, um, there is an issue that's open, and uh, let me link it in here. Um, so I scheduled a kickoff meeting uh, just before our regular weekly meeting. Um, so if you're interested in kind of helping to look at the landscape or contributing to it, um, definitely just um, leave, a, leave a comment on that issue and I'll send you an invite to that. Uh, other than that, um, the security assessment issues are going well. Uh, we have a couple folks there looking into each of them. So hopefully within the next few weeks, we can kind of um, present some of the, the proposed changes here. So, great, thanks, Brandon. So just to reiterate that, I think uh, just for the purpose of, uh, you know, if you're interested in an issue and if you'd like to partake and contribute, just please, uh, you know, call yourselves out on those tickets and then, you know, uh, the respective people will, you know, loop you in into, you know, I, I don't know, make maybe a private Slack chat or a Slack room or something, and then we can kick those off. And I noticed today that there are no other uh, updates or topics that we want to talk about. So I, I had opened two uh, PRs. Uh, towards the end of last year and Emily had warned me and I was being very ambitious and I completely dropped the ball on it. I was exhausted towards the end of the year, but here we are, brand new year. Hopefully we can take it off. And the two issues that I, I, I had called out and I think I've gotten some feedback on those PRs, thank you to everyone who responded, are uh, a kind of like a webinar, like a round table to talk about the cloud security uh, white paper. So what I'd like to do, I think this, which is um, in line with what we've been doing is I'll create a new Slack channel uh, uh, to call out all the people who have uh, you know, uh, expressed an interest so that we could uh, you know, have some chats around it and figure out how we can make that happen. So that's one. And then the goal of that, just real quick, is to amplify the message of the Cloud Native Security White Paper. I think it's a fabulous artifact. There's so much of interesting stuff. But uh, we want to make sure that people are aware of it and then understand the objectives and, and, the, and the key takeaways. And so the more that we can do to amplify that message, I think would be great. So I will do that. And the second thing is uh, uh, we also talked about doing some uh, double click kind of blogs. Uh, I know there was one blog that summarized the entire uh, landscape, the, the paper, the security white paper. But then there is, a, I think there's plenty of opportunity to break it up. So I created another PR and I know uh, it's on me to actually 
provide a little bit more context around that. I'm going to do that. And I have also seen some people express an interest. I believe it's 495 and 496. Uh, at the end of the meeting today, maybe I will uh, reference it uh, in, in our SIG security chat. But uh, those are two things that I will definitely be kicking off. And hopefully we can all collaborate and um, get that off the ground. So those are two things that I wanted to talk about. And uh, I don't know, uh, maybe I, I got first time lucky. This, this might end up being one of our shortest meetings, but is there anything else that anybody would like to talk about? Um, so when I add a quick question on uh, the two issues that you brought up. Um, yes. The second part where uh, we want to do micro blogs. Um, was there an issue about um, updating the paper with more content as well as version two? Yes. Is that so a separate issue from this I micro blog? Yeah, I believe so. I think that is a separate issue, Aradna. Got you. Okay. Yeah, you. so there's actually a few issues that are open about the white paper. So there is the retrospective um, that Pushkar had opened up on it. Um, there's the micro blogs, there's the webinar, and then there's the breakout topics one which is 495 and a that's the one that you had submitted um and i had tagged and related it back to the retrospective so there's a few of them that are kind of all in that same realm that i think would be good to to solidify that group either through the current white paper channel for anything related to that or just creating a separate planning channel and uh, vinay you could probably use the SIG security events channel for planning that webinar and having that conversation. We currently use it for the security day, but it's not restricted just to security day. So um, there's also that, I think, Brandon, do we already have a label for the um, white paper, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, so we, we can go through and add those labels to the corresponding issues that are all related. I, 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 the, Emily, does it make sense? That's a great point. Does it make sense <laughs> at the risk of creating yet another issue to actually, uh, uh, how, how do we, uh, how do we co correlate uh, uh, all these uh, the related issues? How do we typically do that? You, usually it's through the labeling schema and commenting them together. So um, I think adding the label to them all will certainly help. That way, okay. anybody that's looking for anything related to that topic, very similar to how we did the assessment process labels. Got it. Yep. No, I will definitely do that. I think uh, right now we have like four or five issues. I will I will take a stab at that and get that done today. Yeah. And also, if, if you see like kind of organizationally that it is becoming a little bit um, uh, dispersed and difficult to manage, we also have kind of like a project tag and we have a project bot that kind of for bigger efforts involving more people is we use it to track. So if that happens, you could create a, a um, kind of uh, a meta issue and then we can label that as a project and then it may be easier to keep track from that. Awesome, yeah, I like that too, Brandon. Maybe uh, I'm, I'm, I might need your help in that. Is it just create an issue and maybe either you or Emily can make it into a project? Is that how that would work? Yeah, so so it, the the main idea is kind of we uh, there has to be a definition of what the project is. Kind of it, it has to be like a defined piece of um scope to work, and then with a timeline that we can keep track of. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's a good good idea. Thank you. I, so, uh, yeah, no, that's great. I will definitely go and clean that up, uh, correlate it so that everybody has visibility into all the related issues and uh, we can go from there. So, so may I, I have one more thing, sorry. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, hold you. So, so one of the uh, topics I wanted to discuss was, um, I don't know if we need to create an issue for this, but I came across this MITRE framework for Kubernetes and um, how that, how we can expand on that in our white paper in the next version. Um, so do you guys think that'll be helpful? I, I feel there is a huge gap in the detection side of Kubernetes platforms today. Um, and correlating information from different bits and pieces is really hard. So having that view of what are the attack patterns and what data is required to correlate and script together to be able to see an attacker in an environment. I think that'll be very helpful from an enterprise perspective. 
So the white paper, we wanted to remain project or technology specific agnostic, um, even though Kubernetes is like the, the thing that everybody is using. Um, but for the Kubernetes um, detection issues, that might be something that's good to do with the Falco project and the Kubernetes security SIG, just kind of like putting together a group just to focus on those. Uh, there was an article um, from one of the community members of Falco that talked about Kubernetes detection, runtime security. I'll see if yeah, that was it. that was Kaize. So Kaize yeah. is one of the security researchers at Cystic. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of the MITRE TAC framework, those are the, so we. So I was part of that, and so to be with the, we wrote that because of a requirement from from an investment bank that kind of wanted to have something mapped to it. I don't know if that, you know, that could be something that could be more widespread. That's more of obviously the group here to kind of decide if that's the case, but it is an amazing framework to kind of say, here's, you know, the logic that could be put here. Um, I just, I guess I'm trying to understand like what, what the end goal of, uh, would that be kind of our best practices in the white paper? That's again, as Emily said, an agnostic piece there, or what are we trying to do with the amount attack framework really? So I remember when we when we were having this discussion a little bit, there there, there were quite a number of issues that came in and said kind of like, oh, is there like a, a best practices or here's like here's a playbook. I'm looking for a playbook for security. Um, and I think the general uh, discussion has always led to um, it always varies depending on what environment you're in. And also I, I think that it is difficult for us to kind of maintain that list for a different set of technologies that are, are very agile and keep keep changing. Uh, I think we can kind of provide uh, a page to reference all this material, but I don't think that we uh, is in scope for us to maintain, maintain these things. <laughs> And Magno has a good point in, in the chat here. I mean, if it's not an official framework, I think the, the tact we should have, and, and again, in my humble opinion, is, is like you said, is basically have links to, you know, things that could be used, but basically, you know, do we want to advocate a specific one? I don't, I don't know if that's something we want to specifically do. Or how about this? Actually, that's a great point, I think, uh, Pop, uh, which is, uh, do we want to consider like a, like a Git repo or sub Git repo or something like that with a whole bunch of collated uh, um, links that uh, that would be helpful in general? There was a, so <laughs> there's an issue going back, I think about a year about the micro microsite. And part of the microsite was uh, this, this thing about education and then it had resources and as well as uh, some additional information on how to do certain aspects of uh, aspects of security. Um, so we wanna um, maybe if we wanna kind of start up the discussion again. Uh, we should continue okay. that conversation in the issue. Let me find it and I'll put it in the chat. It's issue number one ten. Oh boy! All right. <laughs> yeah, it's going back three hundred issues. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there there is an issue, um, issue number 110. It's for a micro site. It's something that we had talked about before. And I believe, Vinay, I had mentioned it to you as being uh, maybe a good place to do micro blogs for the SIG. Okay. Um, but uh, I'm going to post the link for it in the chat. Um, so this is something that we've been wanting to do for a very long time, and there's a potential for a plethora of content. So I don't want to lose track of this particular discussion, but if folks are interested in the microsite, there's an issue, you can sign up for it. Um, but I think a collective resource for not necessarily specifically Kubernetes security, but anything associated with cloud native security, um, documentation resources and blogs, um, frameworks as well that kind of go just just, just that extra step beyond for somebody that wants like a singular repository of where to go to look for things. Cause I've seen tons of cross posts in various Slack channels and um, Slack workspaces about, hey, this is how I collect and manage all of my Kubernetes related security information or Docker information and so on. Right, awesome. Just to uh, weigh in. Sorry, yeah, go ahead, Robert. 
a, an answer, I, I don't know, I think it was Dan who asked the question, what is the goal of, of putting MITRE or any framework, lowercase f, into the white paper? I, I have used that not in the specific context of Kubernetes, but in two different clouds uh, for mapping incident response, both in the preparation for incident response, tabletop exercises for incident response, and then actual incident responses. And of course, for risk assessment, so proactively assessing risk and then retroactively post-mortem assessing risk. So um, we happen to use the MITRE framework for both Azure and AWS clouds, um, but lowercase f framework, any framework, I think is a useful concept or tool for doing that, th those types of activities. Yeah, so as I'm kind as of aware, I'm just one other thought. I'm, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead, Magnum. I apologize. Yeah, no, I, I just want to add to to this. Uh, as I've seen this uh, Kubernetes uh, MITRE framework for a while now, it, it was released by Microsoft like April in the last year, right? So it's not, a, as I said in the chat, it's not an official framework, right? But uh, MITRE has put out a blog post recently asking for help for, for the community and company. So uh, we can either reach out to them either as the, the SIG security group or with your individual companies there. Uh, that's one of the things that we're doing here. And uh, yeah, they're trying to create a, a either like a MITRE framework for containers in general or, or having both one for, for containers and one specific for Kubernetes. So maybe like a cloud native uh, MITRE framework would be a good idea to start. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, that's just my, my thoughts there. So, so uh, just to kind of clarify, my thought was not like, hey, what are we, why are we doing? It's more of wh like, why are we deciding like, you know, the, the specifics here? And so this, this is great. I think it's, it's, it's where the MITRE attack framework is, is a great framework if it's not adopted, like if it's not like has something specific, as you said, to cloud native, I think that's something that we, you know, maybe we should somewhat get involved with, but we shouldn't advocate anything, you know, specifically unless it's a standard that like um, everyone wants to adopt, I guess. I guess it's a very wishy-washy answer there, but like it's, it, I don't know if we want to draw a line in the sand that on something that hasn't been kind of, um, advo that hasn't been kind of uh, advocated out there, so. Yeah, what I like about the framework is that they focus on real world scenarios, right? So they only add stuff that they see in real life attacks or like honeypots and stuff. So that's what they're looking for uh, help with. So yeah, I think it's a great framework and, and if we can provide any guidance or, or help or any data for them, it would be uh, very helpful for the community as a whole. I mean, my, my sense over there is uh, like even I'm looking at that Microsoft blog post, at least the one that I posted there was, you know, uh, this whole space, people are still learning, people are still trying to understand it. So it's, it's, it's really good for them to understand all the different threat vectors and then the way the threats progress and so on. So, and, and I understand it's not officially official. Uh, but uh, maybe we can uh, make it into some other type of a threat framework and not call it a MITRE framework, but just to help uh, uh, educate the, the, the community around uh, uh, generic threats for, I don't know, Kubernetes and containers. Maybe that's a thought. One of the things, I'm sorry to bogart the meeting, but I have one thought here. I, I was, I'm was i also in the uh, CNCF uh, financial services user group, and they're looking for like a specific like set of guidelines from a security perspective. And if SIG security is the one that's the overarching saying, this is the one that we think is, is uh, you know, wh whatever it is, I think we have to basically put our line in the sand at some point and say, yes, we're going to support the MITRE attack framework. And here's some great concepts that you all want, want to use, you know, out of the box. Right. It's and again, it's vendor agnostic because every vendor is going to be able to have, you know, MITRE attack framework, you know, the discussions, it's up to the end user to choose what those things are. So I think, yeah, uh, at some point we should probably have a working group and figure out or if we haven't already what what it is, what these things are and kind of standardize on it and help MITRE if we need to is my two cents. So we in a way, the, the framework of choice is going to depend where people are coming from and how much time do they have available and what the yes scenario is. Someone may opt for like, oh, we're going to do SSRI. We don't need to do like full on mitter. So 
it could be a, hey, look, these are all the frameworks that are out there. Like, they're great, they're proven to work. Here are the considerations of one over the other. Apply whichever is applicable in, in the given instance. We don't need to get behind a particular one, but I think our goal is to, to educate and in turn, hey, depending on what your objective is, you may evaluate among these and choose one over the other for your project or for the implementation of that project. So in the past, we've talked about creating threat matrices or assisting in projects and doing a threat matrix um, for themselves as part of the security assessments. And when we were doing the Cloud Native Security White Paper, we kind of talked a little bit about um, threat assessments and how much of that content should go into the white paper. And I think that it might be beneficial to have that as a one of the breakout topics. Um, that way we can move forward in that space because I've also seen requests for that same information and perhaps having it broken out. I think um, Aradna had mentioned at the cast and the fast level would also be beneficial. So not just through orchestration and containers, but also going down to serverless too. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Robert. You have a, uh, your hand is raised. Oh, no, I, that was from before, I guess. I, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think, uh, no worries. Uh, I think uh, maybe uh, this calls for another ticket so that we can collate all our ideas put together because I know these are fantastic ideas, but it just, that's just the best uh, option where we put down all our ideas, collate it, have a separate uh, working group, and then figure out how we can converge and land somewhere that's useful for the community. So I'll create a ticket, Vinay, since I started the conversation. So yeah, that, that's great. I'll collaborate. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. Thanks, Aradna. A lingering thought, uh, Vinay, is when when Justin Capos did the attack matrices for Spiffy Inspired two, three years ago, like the team met every Wednesday, every week throughout a year, and they, they came up with this exercise that was informed by many methodologies, but everything was like, was thrown out of the window and every single person came from a different background and have different opinions so perhaps we can exemplify of hey actually get people who are performing different using different frameworks and are producing or extrapolating from all of it and coming up with something better ultimately that could be like the six security approach yeah i, I like it andres yeah that should definitely, please make sure to put that down there. I like it a lot. Aradna, would you be able to link the Spiffy's fire assessment as kind of like an example within the issue? I will. Sure. Thank you. Awesome. Well, it's a bit uh, different suggestion here, but maybe we should invite somebody from MITRE to come talk to the group because. Great idea. My company has an NDA with them and they've got two divisions. You know, one is to exploit industrialization, commercialization things. Uh, the more researchy folks are working on a unified ontology for cybersecurity, which I know is separate from this threat landscape stuff, which tends to be more practical. In our organization, the ops people are very focused on the attack surface and reconciling the telemetry from our tooling into the uh, uh, into the threat. But across information security more broadly, and especially looking at DevSecOps, uh, the threat matrix is not well integrated. The, the MITRE framework for uh, the attack services are not isn't quite as well integrated. So that's so what I am trying to say is MITRE, other folks at MITRE are interested in uh, broader issues as we are. Uh, so it might be interested to I could extend an invitation to see if we could get somebody to talk there. They're very cagey. Maybe other people on the call have talked to them. They're, you know, they're an FFRDC, but they're reluctant to talk about things that they think are proprietary, even though it's federal dollars often that are just promoting the work that they're doing. So it, it can be frustrating to talk to them, but there's a lot of interesting work there that they're, that they're trying to do. And if you try to do automation of brown security, you're going to find yourself trying to do things with UCO or one of the MITRE 
uh, taxonomies. So it, it might be, you know, if we're on our forward looking aspects of the work we do here, it might be, you know, at least good to invite them so they're aware of what we're doing too. Yeah, Mark, that's a great point. Um, I do have some connections at MITRE as well through NIST. So I'll reach out to them as well and see if they are interested in working with us on this um, and then get back to the team and or include them in the issue. Lovely. So I know Magno made a comment. Uh, we can reach out to the MITRE attack for continuous team lead, which was one that posted the blog. Uh, so do you want to elaborate on that, Magno? Sure. Yeah, there is a, a, a link to a blog post and MITRE uh, Ingenuity posted on December 17 on, on the chat there. I can post it again. Uh, so Jen Burns is the one that's leading this uh, MITRE for containers, MITRE attack for containers. Uh, I've reached out to her already like uh, for uh, for us to provide some some data and information related to what we've seen out there in the wild, but yeah, we, I, I have her uh, email and we can definitely uh, contact her and ask her to join in a next meeting or, or any other date. Yeah, that, I think that's a great idea. I mean, yeah. the more input that we can get from those folks and to figure out how exactly we can collaborate. And uh, once again, for me, making it really, really useful for the community to understand this is, is the better, I think. Yeah. And I think once again, please feel to make sure to put that down in the ticket that Aradna is going to open on this as well. Sounds like it's lining up as a series of great guest speakers. <laughs> Speaking of great guest speakers, we actually have a presentation scheduled for our next meeting on Software Factory from Jonathan Meadows. So just wanted to let everybody know that. Yep, perfect. Great. Yeah, I think we have also, we have a string of good presentations this month. I think on 20th of also, we have the Rick Hall project, which is on um, on signing transparency, similar to certificate transparency. So it sounds like February is another good month for lots of presentations. <laughs> Is that the recall, Brandon? The recall? Yes, it's recall. Recall, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we got it lined up for the next couple of weeks. Awesome, guys. That was a great uh, discussion here. I'm looking forward to what we do with uh, the, the MITRE framework in the context of containers. And, uh, you know, going one last time, uh, Any anything else that you guys would like to talk about? Uh if it's the last option, I, I just uh, mentioned that we did have our policy work group meeting. Oh, uh, we yes. have those at 8 a.m. Pacific every other week on Wednesdays. So uh, I, I think that there's some magic process that occurs where that, because we use the same Zoom uh, and I'm not sure how it gets archived, but I think there is some process that can occur to archive those videos. So I'll, I'll follow up. Uh, uh, Jim usually handles that. I don't think he's on right now. But we'll try to post that on the and there's a Google Doc with the agenda notes. Uh, today's talk we had a presentation about mapping our the policy work group has produced a Kubernetes CRD for policy report output and uh, presentation today was about mapping that to OSCAL and specifically for those familiar with OSCAL uh, the SAR the assessment report or assessment results. Uh, so anyone's interested in that. Uh, you can review the uh, recording when it's posted or just reach out on Slack and we'll we'll try to send it to everyone. Actually, Robert, would you, is there a link that you could provide to the your meeting notes document? Yeah, if you could post that in Slack, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I'll post oh. that in Slack. I, I, okay. I'm on a mobile device, so it's hard to switch windows, but yeah, I'll get that on the Slack for everyone. That would be great, thank you. All right, well, uh, yeah, I think I have that, a, another quick question. Sure. Yeah. Hi. Um, there were a couple of issues that were opened. Um, just pulling them up uh, about uh, automation of uh, the security assessment process and creating tooling. And uh, I missed the the meeting. 
were uh, when they were discussed, I just wanted to ask about the differences between them. There was a mini discussion in the GitHub issues about that, but if someone can clarify, because that sounds very, very interesting um, and relevant for me, I just want to understand the nuance there. So uh, unless anybody else wants to go, I can take a stab at refreshing everyone's uh, uh, on, on that topic. I think what came about was, uh, you know, in the context of the assessments and how can we evaluate projects and how can we automate a lot of those concepts. So I think there was just a lot of discussion around it. And I don't think we landed anywhere in particular. But once again, that's another one where we weren't quite sure. Uh, there were some concerns on cost and operationalizing it and liveliness and how do you keep all the projects updated and so on. So, so that's where we were at. I mean, it was, a, it was a good topic to talk about, but I think that once again, the devil is in the details and we really need to understand the right. scope and converge on that. All right, so, so um, maybe and a more I, specific question. Oh, yeah. No, I was going to say, I, I think just for the, I don't know whether you're kind of thinking about it in terms of the security assessment work group issues that we're looking at, but I think for now, um, you know, since that's kind of something that is just started the discussion on, we should not include that in kind of the the specific points that we discuss during the work group. Just so that okay. we don't we don't grow the scope too much. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Well, I think uh, I'm going to finally call it, folks. Thank you very much. Uh, Happy New Year and look forward to a, a great year ahead. Cheers. Vinay, you did a great job. Great job. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.